Good morning, good morning everybody and to si welcome to Success Coaching Live. My name is Eric Reed, and I am your success coach and yeah, different backdrop. Why? Because it's Fun Friday and we have a special guest and so I thought I'd lay out a new setting for him. So take a minute, log in, enjoy the view. Our guest should be here in just a minute. Good morning, Miss Betty Brown. I hope you are doing well. Good morning, Joe. Are you ready for some awesome notes? Look what I set up for you, Lisa. Good morning. Good morning. I know you are excited about jumping in. I will take care of that business in just a minute. We are doing a success coaching live and part of the fun is when I get to brainstorm and share with other people that are in the industry, ideas and leaderships and principles. You know, knowledge is one of those things that you can't add to, you can only multiply. And so I wanted to bring Lisa down to the end of the street. I know this is the end of my street um, and I know how she's a beach lover. So I thought, let's let's give it to her. Um, so part of my journey was that I wanted to live on a beach. I've never lived on a beach. I've never lived in a beach town. I'm a kid trapped from landlocked Minnesota, you know, and a few years ago, we set it down as a vision and a mission statement. We started building goals and working towards it. We had this thermometer on the the blackboard that we kept like crossing out when we would hit certain mile markers financially. And now look, I took a two minute walk and this is my life. So that is success living. Um, and so I wanna get Lisa on the line here in just a minute. Good morning, Dr. Holly Kelly. It is so fun to have you. Um, we are down at the beach, just at the end of my street. I've got my little beach bag full of wisdom for you, Lisa. So don't get nervous. Um, and so it's going to be a lot of fun. Do me a favor right now, share it out, share it out. I mean, who doesn't want to enjoy this view in the morning, especially if you're in like Wisconsin, Minnesota, Chicago, Ohio, those states that are getting cold and wintry. Um, I'm sort of tucked in here in the bushes, so to speak, because the wind is up. But let me go find Miss Lisa. I think I got her here and bring Lisa on camera if you haven't done this before. So now I'm curving back over here so I can see your comments. Try not to be jealous. You live in sunny California, uh, but this is, this is literally, it took me about two minutes to roll down the hill to get here. Um, and so it uh, should, should be fine. I see Linda, Lisa's being invited. Now I'm not sure what's slowing down the technology unless she's just scared. Um, Lisa, drop a comment, or Joe, drop a comment if there's a problem with the invite or if it's just a technical IT thing on your side. And I'll continue to talk in the meantime. So we just finished up the mission vision statement. My mission vision statement at one point was to provide something like this for my family. And I don't know how long something like this is going to be. It may be a year. It's already gone past it. Maybe two years, 10 years. I don't know. But we are living in the morning moment. We are enjoying our lifestyle here in our little town of Uruguay. It was wonderful this morning. It's Lisa's technical. Just hit accept. Um, any minute now I see her get a pop up or if I have to send an invite again, Joe, let me know. Um, and this morning my son was taking off to go. So up the point, I don't know how to do this on camera, but if you see up the point, this is whale migration and they come through here. And so the kids from the classroom have been studying the migration pattern and studying whales and all of that. And so they're gonna run up to the point and watch that. And then they're gonna go on to Panda Zucara, which is the mountain of sugar and uh, enjoy that for the day. Cause um, I'm gonna do this again, Lisa, for you and make sure that you have an invite. Um, so now you should have the invite again, Lisa. This is funny. Um, so when you do something like this and you step out of the box, you got two choices. Just toss the whole thing in the sea and abandon it or keep going. And I'm the keep going guy. I'm the high risk guy. I'm the guy that jumps in and re-jumps in and jumps back in because I'm not afraid to see what happens next. And if we have to do it through texting, we can. Or if I have to send Joe the invite, we can. But you should be being invited right now. Lisa's going to jump on in a minute. If you guys have questions right now about your mission statements, your vision statements, or how you end up living like this, um, then let me know because it didn't happen because I just woke up one morning and said I wanted it to happen. It happened 
over a series of strategic planning steps. And part of what I do with my coaching clients is we set a vision like this and then we back into it like, what is the next best step? What is the next best step? What is the next best step? Until we get to what is the first best step? And part of that first best step for us was getting rid of our credit card debt, getting rid of all of the money that we thought we were, that we had that we really didn't have. And as soon as we eliminated that debt and that obligation to ourselves, or two other people, we were able to then utilize that money for ourselves and for our dreams. And once we had done that, then it became almost exponential growth because we were investing in us and our future, not in Chase, not in Visa, not in, um, okay, I'm gonna try this, Lisa. Uh, da, da, da. I think that's it. Are we together yet, Lisa? You're totally confusing me. Um, you should be getting the join and option. You know, this is a funny thing when you do technology. Lisa and I have done this before and it failed. Um, but it's okay. Lisa, we can keep on going this way. It's, let me try one more trick, everybody. Hang on. We're not going to give up. Just enjoy the view. I'll just let go like this. You guys can, ooh, the wind's coming up. You guys can enjoy the view Why I invite Lisa one more time. Lisa, make sure you're in landscape mode, so you're in the long mode with your camera. I see Dr. Holly Kelly's here. You know if you fail, I'm going to make Dr. Kelly do it again. You're being invited. And any minute now, you should just accept the invite. All right. Um, so, Lisa, are you able to solve it, or are you able to jump over to Joe's? You have to turn the device. So, yeah, go landscape, Lisa. Go landscape. Long ways. This is landscape. So now she wants me to try and join hers. Oh, Lisa. Am I live on yours now, Lisa? Because I don't know. I can't see anything. Um, oh, yay! I see my screen split. Yay, hey. Lisa! <laughs> Lord. <sighs> now I know why you got to play the... <laughs> so I think you're good. It's a tough one. but So anybody that's doing this, let me explain. Because I want you guys to use this as a tool as you grow your businesses. If I'm in landscape and Lisa is in portrait, often it won't connect. If I am in Apple landscape and she's in Android landscape or portrait, it won't connect. So make sure that your end user and you maybe communicate ahead of time about what format your phone's gonna be in and what format they're in. Because what happens is the technology tries to say, wait a minute, these two pieces don't fit together, but these two pieces do. So that's what happened, and guess what? You got an IT lesson down by the sea. I mean, how much better is that? Ah. You're good, Lisa. Don't move. Don't fiddle. Oh, no, wait. She's fiddling. Why is it women do that? Help me, Dr. Kelly. Why is it women always feel they got to fiddle? Are you still with us, Lisa? I'm still here. Okay. I'm still here. There, there we go. There she goes. So Lisa, and I, I'm just going to jump in, don't touch, don't fiddle. Put your hands on the top of your head, Lisa. Hands on top of your head. I. There you go. There you go. This way, this, this is way. like when you have that group of seven-year-old boys and they're all running wild and you need two minutes to refocus. Hands on top. What was it we used to do in school, if you can hear? Yeah, we got to respond. Okay. Yep, okay. exactly. So I invited Lisa because Lisa and I have done a bunch of classes together. And I love Lisa's perspective. Lisa has got such a unique perspective on the way she think, see things. And she's a woman of faith. And she always makes sure that her faith is part of her lessons. And so first, I want to ask you a couple questions. And then I'm going to dig into my little beach bag full of magic. I know you're so nervous, aren't you? You think I would do what I did with Dr. <laughs> Kelly? No. We never do the same thing twice when we can have fun doing something new. So you did a journey across America. You and your daughter walked how many states? We crossed Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, and Louisiana. 
four. <laughs> Woof. I mean, you and Martin Luther. Um, <laughs> so when you were, I mean, when you were sitting in that room and you told everybody, we're going to do this journey across America. We're going to cross Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, and I missed one. Louisiana. Louisiana. And somebody said, you done crazy, girl. What was your first response? Like, how did you counteract that? It was interesting because there were so many people that just were dumbfounded by the thought of walking across the country. And for me, it, it was just, you take a step at a time. It wasn't any big deal. You just start walking and eventually you'll get there. <laughs> but for other people, it seemed like an insurmountable task. So they were looking at the journey and you were looking at the next best step. Mm -hmm. Now, did you exactly. try and convince them that all you have to do is one step or did you just sort of like, uh, you're too little to see so big, I just need to go? The conversation was very simple. It was, how are you going to do that? And I said, just take one step at a time. It was simple. And then they just kind of looked at me and went, hmm. <laughs> Good morning, Scott. <laughs> So, but when you said it was simple, like ending up here, this is the sea in Uruguay, tip of South America. From Minnesota, people look at me like, how did you? And to me, I say the same thing. It was simple, but it really was a series of complex things that you had to solve. It Why was, can you and reflect on it now? Now that I'm it's writing simple. a book. Now that I'm writing a book and I'm actually having to think deeper into what I actually did, I can see more of the complexity of what actually happened. I see a complete mindset change that had actually started before I felt called to take that journey. Ooh. So, Did you guys hear that? that it that started was... here, not down there on her feet. Absolutely, absolutely. It, it began actually before I felt called to take the journey. And when I first began, when I take a step back to the few months prior to that, it really began as a series of questions and getting to know myself and the things that I really wanted. Where do I want to go in life? What do I want to do? And if there are going to be obstacles, what's, what is it that's going to hold me back? Why would I let that hold me Ooh. back? So a lot of times we see these walls, but we let ourselves get stopped by them. Instead, I chose to take a perspective twist. And if I saw a wall, I'd say, well, how do I get over it? How do I get around it? Who do I need to help me to move forward? Because I knew especially in a journey like a walk across the country, I knew I could not do that on my own. What I think, I think that's true no matter what we're doing. What I think is fascinating, if you guys heard her, she said, I had a series of questions that I wanted to ask myself. Who do I want to become? What do I want to accomplish? What is my legacy going to be? How is this going to change me? And those are the 11 questions in a sense that we went through in the Discover You. And then she took those 11 questions and once she had that answer, her vision and her mission became clearer to her on what she wanted to do. And once she had that vision and mission of like, I want to walk across America. Now she didn't really know the details and somebody was going to be, what are you going to do about a hotel? What are you going to do about food? What are you going to do about that? And you know, we've got those people around us that start throwing that stuff at us and we get in a tendency to feel like we have to, to volley it back like a tennis game. When in reality, what you said is I shifted the perspective. I didn't respond to the problems. I didn't respond to the questions. I simply asked myself, what do I need to climb over that wall, go around that wall, go under that wall? Mm -hmm. That's exactly it. How often did you have to ask yourself that question on the journey? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
<laughs> daily? <laughs> step, step by step sometimes, I'm sure. It, it was. So for those who don't know, the, the, the whole purpose of the journey was to share hope with people, to give them encouragement. Um, my daughter was in a, a near fatal car accident and the doctors told us that they didn't expect her to live when she lived. They eventually told us that they didn't know if she would ever walk, talk, or leave a hospital. So we had been through a very dark period in our life. But the day before the accident, she had declared she wanted to be a missionary to Africa. Coming out of the hospital, she was told that she would likely never go to Africa um, for a number of different reasons. But yet, it was still a desire on her heart. And missions is always a piece on my heart. So when we saw this journey, when the opportunity came, we knew that it was meant to be a trip, that we could raise money, we could share the awareness, we could open um, doors, and we were still able to give to missions. And the missions that we supported were stateside as well as Africa, but they all went to helping people in their journey of finding Christ and being able to provide for themselves as entrepreneurship types of things. And so when we were on this journey, we had a very deep sense of why we wanted to complete the journey. And uh, the journey was intended to be a walk all the way across America. And we started in... Um, Tybee Island, Georgia. So we wanted Ooh, to start right beautiful. on the Kind of coast. like this. <laughs> exactly. Very much like that. And uh, the problem was, or part of what some people would perceive to be a problem, is that with her injuries, with her recovery process, we didn't know how far she could walk every day. We didn't know if she would be able to walk every day. And that presents a problem because that doesn't allow me, as a walker, to plan ahead very far. Because I didn't know how long it would take me to get, or take us, to get from point A to point B. So I want to... So we had to kind of be... So, so just, to, did you guys hear these lessons? So there are a couple lessons I don't want to just roll through. That initially there was this goal to go to Africa and be a mission. And then there was an interjection or a life change point. And instead of abandoning the goal of going to Africa, they reevaluated the goal and said, okay, maybe Africa is not the now destination, but what could we do now that most mirrors, most shadows, most echoes that goal? And they went back in and they looked at the goal and it says, was it to go to Africa or to be a mission, to be of service to somebody? And what they realized was we want to be in a mission field. We want to be of service. We want to support missions. And then they were able to say, okay, so how can we change that? Well, let's start here and now. We talked about that yesterday, starting here and starting now. So they found the most logical, distant, far east piece of America that was nearby that they could say, we'll start here. And then each day, each day on the journey, they had to reevaluate the goal. Are we just going to do Georgia? Are we going to do Georgia and Alabama? Are we going to do Georgia, Alabama and Mississippi? Are we going to do Georgia, Alabama, <laughs> Mississippi and Louisiana? They didn't lose sight that the bigger thing was the mission, not the destination. Yep, yep. So as we, we started, we had plans in one place. We had the plan for Tybee. So I had a host that I did not know. And I just met her online. She owned a shoe store and hosted us for a couple of nights. <laughs> And it was, it was kind of a rude awakening, actually, because of where we were at. I don't think she really understood my daughter's situation. I think she saw my daughter sleeping, and she probably felt a little bit like... These, these people, people came really to do a mission walk, and they're sleeping on my couch. <laughs> exactly. I'm, I'm certain that's how she was feeling. She's like, wait a second. This isn't quite lining up, but that was our reality. She had to get accustomed to where we were. And do um, you know that change in the atmosphere from Wisconsin to Georgia, that's something we started in June. So 
there's temperature changes, of course. Um, just getting used to the overwhelm of, of everything going on. Well, and I, think she... it's, I think it's interesting, and I want to sort of bring this, I, I'm sorry to interject, but I, it's a great lesson, and I don't want us to jump through it in a conversation, is that first they had to acclimate to where they were. They had to, they, they left with a vision, but when they arrived, they had to settle into the place. And, and that was physical, but also with somebody with a traumatic head injury, that is environmental, that is noise, that is sight, that is sound, that they didn't hit the ground and take off running mm -hmm. without first evaluating their physical resources and in part their emotional and their mental resources. And what that will happen with yeah. us when we take on a challenge or seek out a new goal is we'll get there and we're like ready to hit the ground and we get like three st steps and all of a sudden we're face down and it's because we didn't take the time to replant that GPS. We didn't take that time to do um, we're boots on the ground reassessment kind of thing. And so I love that lesson that when you got there, what other people think as giving up on the journey, laying on the couch, eating this woman's food and not leaving when you promised you would, was really both of you settling into the next piece of the journey. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And it wasn't, it wasn't necessarily not leaving when we said we would because we didn't have a <laughs> A timeline. <laughs> if you were my guest, three days, boom, <laughs> out. She did. She she did say to me, "When do you plan on leaving?" <laughs> and you know that was my clue. That we'll be gone tomorrow. Get up out and of tomorrow my came and I went. Where are we going? We were only there a couple of days, just two, I think. But um, you know, when we left her place, I thought, "Where are we going? We know the route that we're going to walk." But there are limited resources here. I certainly don't have enough money to pay for a hotel every single night of this journey. That would be ridiculous. The purpose of the journey was raising money for missions. So, you know, it wasn't responsible to use that money for hotels. But what I, it was what in I that, love about your in story. Our... Oh, I'm sorry. What I love about your story is that it was honestly every day stepping into faith like okay where are we gonna sleep where are we gonna eat oh my gosh it's getting ready to rain do we hide under the mm -hmm. bank you know tell her thing do we knock on a stranger's door that each day you had to step not only back into your vision and your mission and your goal but step back into alignment with your faith and through that and having done similar experiences Man, it's easy to have faith when you're sitting at home with the remote control, the credit card, and Amazon two-hour delivery for dinner. It's another thing when you're on a highway mm -hmm. and you see storm clouds rolling towards you and you're thinking, wait a minute, we're, we're not going to make it to our next destination before that cloud comes on us and having to make a spontaneous decision. Yeah. So right. one of the things I know you're working on is as a book and a teaching lesson into all of this. When is that mm -hmm. due out? See how I did that? I just forced her to have a deadline. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, well, I'll tell you, Eric, it was expected out last summer. <laughs> My book writing journey has been... Oh, challenging, very challenging. Um, and, and I think that's another one of these hurdles that we, we try to overcome. We think that we know the way things are going to go. And all of a sudden, there are roadblocks in our way. There are reasons that I didn't move forward. I have a lot of personal reasons for that. I have um, places on the other side where things didn't work out that so you know, so so so, uh, so, so, so way, i'm sorry so. i've i've been a coach too long that's the story what's the commitment <laughs> that's the story but the, i wanted to share that as a I, I, lesson i got it okay you got it because there have been hurdles but it, you've overcome hurdles in the past you've yeah. had obstacles in the past you've had setbacks in the past you asked yourself what do i need to do to get over the wall around the wall under the wall through the wall what mm -hmm. do you need from us or from, from the universe to help you get to the end of the book? 
So right now, this is the exciting part, Eric. I'm meeting with my editor tomorrow, as a matter of fact. So I'm very excited about that. And my hope, my end goal to answer your question most directly is I'd really like to have it out by Christmas. All right. So everybody still here and in share mode, what you're going to be doing is I see Lisa's vision of a book under the Christmas tree complete. I see mm -hmm. Lisa's vision of a completed book under the Christmas tree or however you want to do it. I'm a firm believer that when we place our mind clearly on what we need, it arrives. So it's time for the fun game. I'm sorry. I'm like, it's already Christmas for me. So last week you saw that Dr. Holly Kelly had choice words in her lucky charm envelopes. And so you said, oh, he's going to do the same thing. I can study up and prepare. Well, ha, I don't think there's any ha, preparing here. There is no preparing for time with Eric. <laughs> I may do this. Let me see how this works. Um, now, that's just horrible. That's bad TV. But I got to tell you, <laughs> burl cream in the sun starts to turn into heat wave. So if you can see them, let me know. Or I'm just going to read them out to make it easy. So I did bring the Lucky Charm envelopes. But what is inside is uniquely Lisa. And so you have... Green Great. clovers, yellow moons, orange stars, rainbow, red balloons, blue diamonds, my colored blindness. I was like, is that blue or purple? Blue diamonds and red hearts or pink hearts. So you get to pick your magic <laughs> envelope. Again, they're the lucky charm envelopes of leadership. All right. Which you want. Today, today, because I'm on with you, I'm going to choose the balloon. The balloon. Oh, you silly woman. Silly woman. So I'm going to put the others away. Give me a minute. I'll be right back. All right. So because it is Lisa, and if you don't know this about Lisa, she'll find the humor in it in just a moment. I couldn't make it easy because part of what Lisa does is teach music, share music. So I decided to write down three notes of a song and see if you could guess it based just on the written music. Sight reading time. How's that? <laughs> and they're like really easy okay. songs. No, um, I didn't do that to you because that would be really sad. us sitting here going, no, no, not it. But what I thought would be fun is, <laughs> can you identify this note? Whoops, sorry. Yes. What note is it? It's a C. C. It's a quarter note C. Quartered out, oh, listen to her, quarter out C. I was thinking of putting all the sharps and all of that in, but I thought, no, 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 I can't do that. I mean, for me, I was going F, A, C, E, bass and all that. So what I want you to do, Lisa, and all your music wisdom and leadership wisdom, is give me a word that begins with C that best describes your approach to leadership and life. Consistency. You know what? Oh, this is y'all gonna like buy a lotto ticket today because I put a backup word in case she was like, I can't think of one. And it happens to be consistency. <laughs> so now I'm really scared that the, the omens and the, the sea gods are with us. So talk to me about consistency as it relates to not only your life but your leadership lessons. All right. From middle C is that middle C or high C? That would be a treble C. That's why I can't sing. So, <laughs> middle C, Eric, would go below the staff. It would come between the treble and the bass clef, thus middle. She just it's like went. the middle of the piano. Y'all, she just went. Because I was like, all boys, all boys, <laughs> no, all good boys. And I was trying to remember all the notes that I learned. So consistency. Consistency. So... Uh, music is great to demonstrate consistency because it's through the consistency that you put into study Ooh. and the same is true for leadership um, whatever we're doing in life when we take the time to be consistent in our journey we don't lose as much momentum at moving forward so we have to be consistent in our growth in our studies in our focus, always getting to know ourselves better because we change every day. 
we have to be consistent in asking ourselves who we are. What do we want? What is this, how does this align with the mission statement that I am going after? So you can see a little bit how that related to the trip, but it relates in business no matter where you're going in life. We so let me, let me take it back to the music progress. piece, to the music piece, because I was the kid that started piano lessons. I'm sure there's like a dozen of us out here. Go ahead and thumbs up if you were one of them. That's mom like said, you're going to take piano lessons. And then like six weeks or end of summer, you were out. When you start with a new student that's dragged in by their mother, like I was, and slammed in front of the piano, do both hands go on the keyboard at the same time? Depends on what you're playing. Piano. But I mean, do you start well, with one or start with two or start with a bit? Where do you start developing that consistency that they grow from? In piano? Mm -hmm. uh, if, if you're looking at one hand or another, my very first piano lesson, they're learning, this is right hand, this is left hand. These are your finger numbers. And when they get on the keyboard, I have them immediately going back and forth between the hands. So I think that's really cute that I walked into your classroom and I know this is my right and this is my left. And yet you said, wait a minute, I need to assess what you do know. And then I need to show you what you know and how to apply it here. So yes, this is your mm -hmm. right and this is the left. And yes, in baseball or you know, soccer or whatever, you know that. But when we come to piano class, this is your upper and this is your lower. This is your first finger. This is your fifth finger. And you really have to break it all the way down to re-educating me. Re-educating? Educating me, sorry. Educating me on the tool that I have and how to apply it to what I want to learn now. That's an interesting perspective. Yeah, I, I guess so. I never thought about it as, as the tool that you have, but that's essentially what it is. It's learning how to most effectively use what you've been given. It's, and it's a combination of, of course, your brain and your body. And Now, mm -hmm. I'll probably get it wrong, but I remember it was like one, two, three, then under, then like this. You know, it was like that one, two, three, then you got to go under, and then you got to start over because you did the skills. I could be wrong. Um, or was it yes. once? So that move of no, like sliding my thumb mm -hmm. under seemed very unnatural because it was like, why not just... Like, why not go here? And it's because what I learned later in piano was, if I go here, then I'm not setting myself up to get to the higher note, to get to the, to the one that's beyond the fifth finger, that sixth, seventh, and eighth note. And so it was really challenging for me to accept what seemed like a natural pattern to change to an unnatural pattern. And I think that's a lot of what we do as coaches is that we take people that are feeling like this should be the next logical step and saying, no, 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 wait, I need to point out how doing this will transform the next six or seven steps. Mm -hmm. So, as, um, you know, as, as far as the hand goes, <laughs> it feels funny looking at this. You're crossing under, it's a bridge, okay? Ooh, thumb is leadership going under lesson. A bridge. And that it is, it's totally what it is. So if, if you're not going to cross under that bridge, you're going to run into obstacles, okay? There's going to be a problem if you're not consistently fingering correctly because we end up with muscle memory. And there's another leadership lesson for you because in that muscle memory, what are the habits that you've established? As we've grown and come through life, we establish habits. We have to get rid of that muscle memory. And, and that's a lesson that you and I both share. It's habits create behaviors, behaviors create results that we want. And if you want to get to that high C note or that F, I don't know what's way up here. You know, I stopped after the dog jumped the fence thing. But if you want to get to that high C, <laughs> you've got to start to develop new habits. And during that crossing under the bridge period, that, that period of transition, that habit's going to take, I mean, I remember sitting and like having to hold my hand and like, you know, physically like the, the, my piano teacher would almost have to push my thumb under. And then I would hit two keys at once because I wasn't going hot. You know, there was all of this like learning on just how to move my thumb 
but yet the stupid thing was when I walked in the classroom, I was pretty good at using my thumb at holding potato chips, but I had never used my thumb <laughs> to cross under the bridge and move to the higher next step. And I love the way you show that as a leadership lesson that if we're not willing to break that muscle memory, to develop a new muscle memory, to invest in that new habit, we're not going to get to the end of the scale. We're only going to get five out of eight notes. Well, that's one of the things that I love in my teaching, no matter what kind of teaching it is. If we have problems changing a habit, now you said you were good at eating potato chips. How did you eat those potato chips? You're going to eat it with just these two fingers, right? If I want no, to cross typically... under three, we could try the potato chip here, or we could even try it here. Now, all of a sudden, you're doing something you want to do. You want to eat that potato chip. You're challenged to eat it with these fingers instead, and you're building up that muscle. Oh, wait, wait, right wait. There. There's so a you... leadership lesson. There's a... Don't pass that over, guys. If it's something you really want, you will focus on changing the pattern long enough to achieve what you want. And then this will become natural. Mm -hmm. And so, oh, Ooh, if there's something you really want, you will focus on changing the pattern long enough to achieve what you want, and this will become natural, and then you'll be set up for the next thing. That's good. Mm -hmm. All that down here by the sea. Um, I'm not going to be able to. I'll just sit here for the rest of the day and think on that. What is a habit that you're currently having to force yourself into that you know once you master it, it will set you up for the next good big thing? Mm. I would say that goes down to writing the book. And in setting aside very intentional quiet time, not distracted by electronics, <laughs> um, do you know, it's... <laughs> <laughs> I tend to be distracted by them. If somebody sends me a message, I have this desire to you know, jump on board and, and please them right away. So I guess part of it is setting aside that intentional quiet time, but it's also in learning to set my boundaries. So boundaries is probably the bigger, better term for what I'm really working on is boundaries. So are you working on setting boundaries, holding boundaries, or recognizing when your boundaries are broken? All of the above. Okay. So what <laughs> is the bound, what you is have... one boundary right now that you, like, you're, I always think of boundaries like guardrails, and it's like my car is too big to fit inside this road. What is one of those boundaries right now that you're really having to squeeze yourself into because you know that it's necessary to change? It's a time boundary, and... I caught myself on it yesterday when I was doing my live because my heart's desire to go out and help the world and just to give, give, give is so big and it's life giving to me. And at the same time, if I'm not careful with that time and making sure that I have the time I need for myself, then I can get depleted. And, you know, so time boundaries to make sure that I'm able to accomplish the things that fall in alignment with my own personal goals. What tools are you using? Challenge. Like the potato chip is a tool that I would use to, to remind myself of the change. What tools are you using right now to help you stay focused on that boundary or to keep that boundary or that new habit or new lesson present in your day? I, I keep notebooks that I write in, okay? So I keep it in front of me in writing my one of my new best friends is calendly.com it's an app that allows people to schedule their time with me <laughs> which i never thought that i would end up doing because i was that girl that hey if i got a free second you know let's just jump on and do it but if i let everybody come in during that free second then my focus is distracted and I don't have that cohesive time to move forward in the project that I'm currently on. So Calendly is, is my new... Joe's got that one. He's got that, that spelling for us. And I will tell you, I use Schedule Once, which is a similar tool. 
And it's so funny now because the other day I got one from my sister and she, and it has a spot like, what do we need to talk about? And she said, your nephew and niece, um, do you have a minute? And I think there was a bit of sarcasm, but what she also knows is that when I show up for that meeting, I show up solely for that meeting. I'm not multitasking over here yeah. or doing this or running out the door, running to this appointment that when people take the time and block time into my life or I block time into theirs, that I show up more mm -hmm. present, more focused, more committed to the outcome than if it just sort of dots across my life. And so I'm gonna tell you guys, if you wanna build a life of success, if you wanna start achieving your dreams, you've got to take control of your time and taking control of your time sometimes requires an app that says, if you wanna talk, click here. Now, my calendar choice or my calendar booking has like a 15 minute spot, a 30 minute spot or a 50 minute yep. spot. And that allows the person to say, you know what? I know he's going to give me 15 minutes because that's what I asked for. I know he's going to give me 30 minutes because that's what I asked for. 50 minutes, that's what he asked for. Now, it's my discretion to go beyond, but I set the expectation ahead of time that I am going to be fully present with you based on what you asked for. And that's intentional mm -hmm. living. That's pouring into people at a higher level than just a random, hey, how are you? Yes, I'm in the grocery store and I'm arguing with the, with the checkout clerk about the price of pears, why the kids are right. No, nobody wants that kind of attention. You know, that's our cast off moment. The people that we want to influence, the people that we want to connect with, the people that we want to make, be of service to deserve our highest and best. And on the other hand, we want to receive the highest and best. So bravo for you for recognizing that you can be more two more by controlling your schedule. And that also helps building consistency because you're not randomly running around trying to please yes. everybody. Wow. It's made a big difference. Um, you know, paper version of it, one of my favorites is the um, Passion Planner. I use that. If you haven't seen the Passion Planner, they, they talk all about this journey that we're on. But throughout the year, they provide questions for us to answer in evaluating our choices with time as well. Cool. Well, Lisa, we have gone like really long. You and I could chat all day, have but we? I think everybody's like yes. distracted by the sea. Let me just, I'm going to move camera, but I'll keep talking. Um, I'm not going to move the camera because that'll mess it up. But now I'm kind of like close. Look, no head. I don't know if it works the same on your side. Um, but I want to thank you for joining me. Was it as scary as you thought it would be? Oh, I know you like to keep me on my toes. So I, I came prepared in my mind for whatever I knew you, you might guess. That, I guess what you might have. So no, it's not scary. So I want to, I love the idea. On, and I'm just going to sort of recap in my mind some of the things we hit on was that you had a vision and a mission. You had a goal, but you had to reevaluate Africa versus what can I do here now locally to achieve or echo that goal and see what comes next? The idea that when I arrived in the, in the starting point, I had to take time to reacclimate, reorganize, refocus, and evaluate what resources I had. That each day during the journey along this mission and vision, I had to determine if the goal was still, what the goal was. And as you said, to raise money and awareness for missions, not to make it to the Alabama coast or Illinois or wherever it was, we stayed centered on what the bigger mission was and not the journey or not the destination that it could achieve. That consistency in changing our habits can open us up to a whole new level of learning and that it's gonna be awkward at first tucking under that bridge and making that key change. But once we do it, we can now play more than just that first three notes. We now have an entire keyboard to dance and create music from. And I think that's really what success living is about, is learning to shift that habit long enough to experience a new level of music in our life that it becomes a symphony. Do you like that wrap up? It becomes a symphony. I do. That if we stay stuck with those first three notes, if we're not willing to change those habits, make those modifications, make those changes, go seek out a piano teacher if that's your goal, or seek out a coach or a mentor or a guide to show you how to develop that habit and then stay disciplined in it. We're going to limit the songs that we can play into our own lives. 
and you won't end up. Now, this may not be your ideal. It's mine for now. My kids are wanting snow. I'm having a hard time turning this into snow. So we may be going in a different direction soon. I don't know. But by changing what we do every day, I now have the ability to go play the entire right hand and in some ways the left hand of my life. Closing thoughts, Lisa. Closing thought. Really get to know yourself, where you want to go. Stay focused on that, that journey and continually be willing to reevaluate so that Oof. you can get over those hurdles because the walls, they're not just a wall, okay? They might be a place for you to stop and learn so that you can move forward more effectively. I love that. And so, it's funny the way you say that. Journey. Live that was the, the adventure. The, I love the adventure. You know me. Um, and that was discover you. Learn to make a statement. That's where we just mm -hmm. wrapped up. So I think it's funny the, exactly. two, the two waves crash together. Um, I want to thank you so much for jumping on and doing this with me. Um, I don't know. We'll maybe have a next Friday person. Maybe not. We'll see who pops into the stratosphere. Um, I'll have to go find a new location. I noticed a little bit ago the security guard for this really palatial mansion that I'm standing next to. Maybe I can flip it around. Walked up and looked at me a little square. Let me see if I can do this. behind that so um i want to thank you for jumping in and everybody go check out lisa she does some fun stuff she does some fun teachings she's got some courses going on now i know she'll drop it in the comments below um and until we get together next friday or next i guess we get together on monday good morning ursula you're gonna love to watch this and share it out my friend lisa who you i think met um gave us a great lesson and so share this out and then join me back here Monday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern. We'll dive back into success coaching on our journey towards the beginning of the year, which is 50 days out. 50 days out, we're going to be starting focusing on our goals. So let's get ready for that. Once again, thank you so much, Lisa. I'm going to give you the view because I know, and for those of you in Minnesota, this is what's happening at the other end of the world. This is not, this is not snow drift. This is not smog and, and cold. It's actually 23 degrees right now, and that's in Celsius. And so I've got work to do, but you know the great thing is this is where I have lunch. I just grab a sandwich and run down here for five minutes of refresh. And that's what living life with success is about, stepping into your dream at least once a day. All right, thank you guys so much. And until we get together on Monday morning, live your life with success. Bye-bye. Thanks, Eric. Thank you, Lisa.